poverty. Hear what I'm telling you now. Reject poverty as a personal mission. Reject it. This is not the issue of Kana. Reject it. You will never be able to do much for the kingdom if you are incapacitated. By the privilege of God's grace, we have conferences happening across the continents and I cannot tell you the monies that are needed in millions of dollars to run these things. Except you are a thief. And even if you are that, you will still suffer. What is on your head is what controls what is around your life. And I'm releasing my faith with Reverend Sam. I know we still have tomorrow. But I want to speak from the depth of my heart. This is why I came here tonight. Hallelujah. That's why I came tonight. It is from what we have received that we give. We don't know everything. At least for myself, I don't know everything. I don't have everything. But there are things we have. Believe me. Believe me. When God has given you something, you have it. It's as simple and honest and sincere as that. Father, in the name of Jesus, over someone's life and over someone's destiny, I speak to you standing upon the grace of God's servant here in addition to the many vessels that have been here in the name that is above all names. First, let me start it this way. Every force that has sat on your destiny and your glory and will not allow you blossom we dislodge those forces now we dislodge those forces now we dislodge those forces now hey the bible says by you i can run through a troop by my god i can leap over a wall i place grace upon your life run like elijah run like elijah i prophesy over your destiny run like elijah overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus run like elijah 10 years in one year one year in one month i prophesy to you 10 years in one year i shift you by prophecy enter a new season 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 listen please hear me you are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value you are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value the reason why we honor global brands today is because there are enough men who have attested to the fact that those brands are valuable enough. You are as valuable as the presence of the people who attest to your value. They cannot reward you if they do not know you are there. Publicity is first a spiritual matter. There are aids, social media and the rest. But there is a hear ye him anointing. And if that grace is not on you, you can do all you can and nobody will hear you. Is someone ready to carry that grace? The grace that God has placed on his servant, placed on the men and the women of God here that will cause the nations, even the ends of the earth to hear you. For as many who will shout amen and believe this, carry that grace now. For your products, carry that grace now. For your vision, carry that grace now. For your ministry, carry that grace now. Son of man, what seest thou? I see four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judea, against in the name of Jesus. Every horn that has risen to shut your voice, to shut your relevance, so that you will not be heard. We bury those voices now. We bury those horns now. I say it again, the transforming church. We bury those voices now. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter.
shelter up of my head. You are my glory. I'm wrapping up. Something is resting on your life. Hallelujah. I'm led in my spirit to speak over two areas and then we are done. Can I pray for your finances? Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. This finance thing, ba. This finance thing. If God does not help you, you will sit down one day and cry like a baby, no matter how old you are. Did you hear what I said? You will not cry because you don't have food to eat. You will cry because you are watching prophecy limited by lack of resources. There are many books today that would have blessed the nation stirring revivals. Money stopped that move. There are many apostolic and prophetic voices, evangelical pastoral voices that should be heralding his message to the nations, but they are incapacitated by resources. You want to see attack? Let the grace for wealth start coming close to you. You will see more attack in your life. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Please hear me. I'm saying this because for someone, if you don't get angry with lack, you may sit down and have visions all you can. And yet you will go and meet the Lord. You will not do one tenth of what he has told you to do. I'm wrapping up, Reverend Sam. When God called me, I listened to late Pat Robertson, 700 Club. And he prayed a prayer as a young man. He said when God called him, naive, not knowing many things, he said, Lord, give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I took out time to pray that prayer and to study them. Then when I came to the subject of favor, I saw that naturally speaking, I did not have any advantage that I could lean on. And I listened to Dr. Mike Modok, may God bless him, bless him. Thankfully, we still have him alive. This man spoke about favor. And I began to learn certain things. I took one month to pray. And I said, God, don't send me with a message alone. I said, Lord, you have to help me and show me. Show me your help, even in this area. You have given me an apostolic call. It is an expensive call financially expensive not just attacks from the spirit even if nobody attacks you you will still not move forward if you don't have resources did you hear what i said yes. thankfully i was so honored to have reverend sam with us at manchester last year it was a surprise just like pastor jerry was saying i mean he's not just done that to pastor jerry i think he's done that to almost everyone within his circle that sacrifice he was over at Manchester and the Lord gives us an instruction to put something at the largest indoor arena and he said not collect offering. There's nothing wrong with free and then to pay, to I mean to, to feed all the workers. Over 2,000, 2,500 people to feed them and he said don't collect offering, don't make one mention. I said God but giving is one of the ways people rise. He said no, there is a narrative about church within the European space that I want to use this conference to correct. Obedience is hard when you are poor. You believe whatever you want to believe. I will tell you this as, as sincere and as modest as I can be. I'm saying that because your story is about to change. Let me tell you this. There are many visions today by God's prophetic hand upon your life. You are supposed to have gone far. 
there are younger ministers younger apostolic and prophetic voices that are rising but you are incapacitated the problem is not lack of grace you have the content you are disciplined you have character people of consecration but you are pegged in one place right now the unbelieving community have bought o2 arena in uk they bought excel and they banned christian activities there completely while that is happening we're here praying in tongues and that is good but very soon they will buy up everything and push us out you see let me tell you the truth you must adopt you see jesus the model had a treasurer and he did not shy away from the issue of finances there are times there were times when they came to embarrass him and they said you claim to be a preacher of righteousness but you are wanting in the area of finances he didn't argue he got the money and showed us from that example how to enjoy peace in life to give to caesar what belongs to caesar there are things that belong to caesar the moment you are serving god caesar will come to embarrass you embarrass your integrity and say you are preaching you are calling you've not paid your tax you know preparing for a conference in uk and canada reverend sam you know this better than all of us i mean you cannot imagine the things you have to pay for insurance seats car park huh once you are gathering a crowd in excess of 10,000 uh, 10,000 people there are certain oh dear by the time they are done with you you will go back for a retreat and ask whether god really sent you i mean what i'm saying we exhausted the doors that were open for canada and we had to now get another 5,000 overflow. And once we did, they had to renegotiate the contract as if the first one was null and void. Ah, but in Nigeria, they can say, okay, since you have done this, love Nigeria, oh, it's not that bad. We are still kind. The kind of help that is needed for you to go forward. I'm speaking to a businessman. I'm speaking to someone in ministry. The kind of help that only God can bring to men. Honestly, I prophesy to you here on this altar, beginning from now and the next 90 days, if you have the faith to believe, write it down and believe. Begin to enjoy tremendous supplies. Tremendous supplies. I prophesy to you tremendous supplies. I place prophetic words upon your head. Let help us arise. Let financiers arise. Let favor conduits arise. In the name of Jesus Christ. I forbid you from begging and borrowing. Finances will not limit your becoming. Finances will not limit your rising. Finances will not limit your thriving. You will lay up gold as dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. Reverend Sam. Will you lend me one minute to speak over those in debt? I'm hearing in my spirit debt. Debt like owing. There are some of you who are neck deep in troubles. There are preachers you are behind. And if God does not help you, you will plunge into depression. Every time people got into debt, it was not business that brought them out. It was prophecy. Whether it's lack of food in Samaria or the axe head that fell, Alas, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought them out. I want to speak to someone. Whether it is personal debt, I've been in debt before. I know the inconvenience that I... there are people who are not sick, but the trouble on their head is better to even be sick. Hallelujah. Can I pray that for you? Because you need to come out of it. The embarrassment, the shame, and the reproach. I tell you, being in debt will strip you of your dignity. People who have no, no audacity to talk to you will tear you down because you are in debt. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Standing on the graces that are here represented, I decree and declare within the next 90 days, by the wisdom of God, by the mercy of God, by the gift of man, by the ministry of helpers, by all godly means, Come out of debt in the name of Jesus. Come out of begging and borrowing in the name of Jesus. 
you will owe no man nothing but love at least at a personal level in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I sense in my heart that for someone else one of the reasons why you have gotten into debt is because of greed please forgive me and don't feel insulted we're wrapping up but it's something the Lord is putting in my heart because there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat your seed has never been part of prophecy never been part of advancing anything kingdom sometimes I feel embarrassed doing this but you see let me tell you the truth there is nobody who prospers in the kingdom if you are not a giver the attacks on an unbeliever is not the same attack on you the unbeliever can thrive with certain principles because they are largely serving Babylon you are vowed to serve the kingdom hallelujah this man you see is not just a receiver by the mercy of God and I apologize if it sounds arrogant maybe the only thing I've not given is, is, is to remove my heart and remove the life and give don't just covet people's testimonies this is why sometimes as inconveniencing as it is it's good for pastors to tell people certain testimonies so they don't just pretend and assume sometimes it's inconveniencing because people mistaking them for pride I have given seeds to the millions of dollars let me tell you I'm saying it to your face don't think I'm I'm, I'm sorry I, I almost feel like I just sin against God now but it's important to tell you don't just think that uh, no no a gentleman came like about a month ago who had been so blessed prayed for him in Ghana God expanded him he's become a millionaire he traveled from Ghana and came with me was it ten hundred thousand dollars or 150 to come and give me and when he came I blessed him and the Lord said uh -uh, this is not for you let him take it back to Koinonia account in the US and deposit it there you think I don't know what to do with a hundred and fifty thousand dollars even if I don't know I'm surrounded by too many wise people to help me know what to do with it your heart for God though I don't want to deceive let's not just shout amen and wrap up and go away if your heart is still closed I tell you your financial gate will be closed eternally hallelujah I'm saying this to you so that you know that behind certain extraordinary results there are things that men do whatever you cannot part with deserves to rule over you one of the ways that God conquers materialism and carnality is to give you prophetic instructions to give I always ask why God will insist that people will give I'm not asking you to give not necessarily but I'm just telling you that one of the ways God prunes the dominion of material things over you is that occasionally in your life he will give you instructions that you almost want to cast that voice away. He does it not because of the money at all. He does it because he wants what has taken his place in your heart to die. Let me pray my last prayer now. Pastor Jerry shared it very powerfully. We adjust to systems and structures, but we never bend. Some of you are bent too far. You would rather leave God than to be poor. Now you've gone too far. That one is dangerous. You would rather push Jesus out of the scene to get fame. That one is dangerous. Are we together? The moment anything fights the place and the position of God in your life, you are already at a danger zone. I can tell you that. I'm praying for someone here who you have lost your love for Jesus. I know this is advanced conference, but please allow me to wrap up with this prayer. You have lost touch with spiritual things. Maybe because you really want to make money, you want fame, you want all of these things. I can tell you the truth. When you take Jesus out of the equation of your life, your life remains barren and empty. And most people just say yes mechanically, but their lives show that Jesus is far, somewhere in their space outside. God is calling us deeper. The strength of the believer is the position you have placed God in. Not just that he's in your heart. Where in your heart is he? You can be in my house and I can leave you somewhere outside. You are in my house but you are still outside. You can be in my house and I drop you somewhere at the visitor's lounge. You are in my house. But there are inner chambers in every house. And people you treasure, you take them there. 
there are many of you jesus is around your life not in your heart he's not outside but he's around somewhere joining the queue after money and fame before him god is calling you now that in all your pursuit you need to redirect your passion can i speak a word of restoration for someone you've lost your fire you've lost your spiritual texture you've lost your zeal for spiritual things and god sent you to advance conference tonight i agree with reverend sam on your behalf in the name that is above all names i decree the grace that draws men to a depth of intimacy with god beyond money beyond material things beyond ministry beyond fame may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you everyone wave your hands and i want you to begin to pray lord i desire you like never before beyond money let me find you beyond fame let me find you beyond progress let me find you wherever i've lost you at any point in my life i obtain grace let me find the true north of my destiny let me find you again the lord is nigh them that call upon him